Fish. Hello. How's everyone? Good. Yeah. <laughs> it's not often you, you get up and you see, oh shit, a third of the front is left. And you're like, oh shit, that was me. <laughs> um, so who likes jokes? Who likes comedy jokes? Yeah. Can we let's hear it for comedy and jokes? <laughs> All right, I'm going to do some comedy and jokes. Okay. You ready? Let's fucking do this. <laughs> In 2009, a chimpanzee named Travis attacked a woman named Charlotte Nash and pulled her hands and face off. <laughs> now, obviously, that's a terrible and horrific tragedy. But, perhaps more important to remember, it's also an awful opening line to a stand-up set. <laughs> See, now, a more competent comedian would have come out and made a joke about his name or, or what he looked like, but I steamed straight in with an animal mauling. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a bit awkward now, you kind of feel that in the room, it's a bit, it's a bit of an embarrassment. But maybe not as awkward as the moment Travis's owner found out her chimpanzee had literally defaced her friend. <laughs> I don't really know how you deal with that though, it's, it's such a terrible thing to happen and I mean she must have felt really embarrassed and just really guilty so I don't know how you get through that, I mean you can't just go onto moonpig.com and like get, get a sympathy card that says like I'm sorry my chimpanzee unwrapped your head like an excited child on Christmas because no matter how good the card is it's never going to put the smile back on its face no, because the, the smile and also all of her other expressions have been pulled off by your chimpanzee. <laughs> so Ch Travis's owner must have felt awful, just really embarrassed, as I said. And uh, I, I, I guess you could say on that day, they both lost some face. <laughs> <laughs> or I guess maybe you might not say that because it's actually quite a lazy pun, isn't it? It's not even very accurate. You see the, the humour there, what little there is, is based on the dual meaning of the term to lose some face. On one hand, of course, it can mean to lose some metaphorical face or suffer an acute embarrassment. So Travis's owner lost some face, she was a bit embarrassed. On the other hand, it can mean to lose some literal physical face. <laughs> which is kind of funny, I guess, but it's it's not really accurate, is it? Because Charlotte Nash didn't lose some literal physical face. No, she lost all of her literal physical face and also both of her literal physical hands. So whilst you might say they both lost some face, it would be more accurate if you were to say on that day Charlotte, uh, Travis's owner suffered an acute embarrassment whilst Charlotte Nash had her face and hands pulled off by a chimpanzee. <laughs> Now, when I say it like that, it sounds like I'm comparing the two to each other, and I, I'm not. I mean, it's not a competition of what was worse. I mean, if it was a competition, and it's not, but if it was, I mean, we can all agree, well, Charlotte Nash would win hands down. Well, not, not hands down, because um, of the chimpanzee. But, I mean, there's very little that was good that came out of that situation. I, the only thing I could think of is that Charlotte Nash will no longer have to, you know, type out a, a colon, and a closed bracket to do a, 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 a smiley face or colon and a, because now she can sum up her full range of facial expressions with an uppercase letter O. <laughs> <laughs> now I was on Travis's Wikipedia page the other day and it's surprisingly completely mental. Um, it really serves as a warning to anyone thinking of getting a chimpanzee as a pet. I mean, you shouldn't need a warning, really, uh, if the pet you were thinking of getting Getting has ever pulled off someone's face and hands, and the rest of the world has gone, well, that was fucking inevitable, wasn't it? <laughs> then don't get that pet. I mean, there's loads of pets that have never pulled off anyone's face and hands. Um, the chicken, a goat, a goose, a sheep, a llama, a parrot, a giant snail, a normal snail, a chinchilla, a chipmunk, a terrapin, a goldfish, a hamster, a hedgehog, a rabbit, a tortoise, a ferret, a pig, a donkey, a gecko, <laughs> an emu, a gerbil, a daegu, and an alpaca. Gee, how was the comedy last night? It's a bit weird, he just read out an aimless list of animals. Um, I don't really know what he was thinking. Yeah, it was probably filler. <laughs>
and it was filler. But you don't really realise how long 10 minutes is until you're sitting in front of a blank piece of paper with chimpanzee mauling written along the top and you're trying to think of something funny to say about it. So I was on uh, his Wikipedia as I said and I've uh, printed out a few bits from there to read to you so that you can get a, an idea of the environment with which uh, Travis has been kept. So it starts by saying uh, that Travis could dress himself. That's quite cute isn't it? He's probably putting on a little Little, uh, like straw hat and a waistcoat and bow ties. It's quite nice. Um, he could he could uh, unlock doors with keys. It's a bit creepy. <laughs> why, why has he got keys? <laughs> I don't understand why the chimpanzee would need keys. Um, it then says that uh, he he could log onto the computer to look at pictures. <laughs> yeah. I think we all know what's happening there, don't we, Travis? The only chimpanzee for miles around. <laughs> He's horny out of his chimpanzee mind. He's been left alone with the computer. He's probably spending all day on the National Geographic website, <laughs> frantically peeling his little banana. <laughs> oh, uh, by frantically peeling his little banana, I mean frantically masturbating his chimpanzee cock. <laughs> which are spined, by the way. Uh, it's not a joke, it's just a, an aside. Um, it then says that Travis uh, could feed hay to his owner's horses eat at the table with the rest of the family, the rest of the family, um, and drink wine from a stemmed glass. Now, whilst drinking wine from a stemmed glass is probably correct etiquette for a human, it's maybe unnecessarily showy for a chimpanzee, an animal that will fling shit around when confronted with its own reflection. Um, if anything, it's a bit arrogant, isn't it? A bit pretentious. But more importantly, why the fuck was he drinking wine? I mean, I don't really care if he's mulling a little brandy in a goblet and wearing a smoking jacket like a monkey Hugh Hefner. I don't think chimpanzees <laughs> should be getting boozed up. It gets so much worse, because then the article just throws in, as a casual aside, that he'd driven the family car on several occasions. <laughs> That's mental. Now, I've never been called a party pooper. I'm a very fun guy. But I don't think you should let your chimpanzee get all drunk on Chardonnay and then drive around in your Honda. <laughs> Best case scenario, he's going to leave banana skins in your door. <laughs> More likely, he's going to be mounting curbs and screaming at passers-by like an unshaved Lindsay Lohan. And that's not to mention <laughs> the literal shitstorm when he catches sight of himself in the rearview mirror. Now, those, that all points to an animal without correct boundaries. The next section really highlights this fact, because the next section is titled Attacks. <laughs> That's a tax with an S, you know, the plural, as in, oh my god, won't somebody do something about all these chimpanzee attacks? <laughs> the first incident was in 1996. It says, uh, a woman who lived in the same area as Travis claims that the chimpanzee had bitten her hand and tried to pull her into a vehicle as she greeted him. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever been abducted by a chimpanzee. I imagine it's quite scary. It doesn't actually say whether Travis was driving the car or not at the time, or whether his mental menopausal owner was just taking him down the shops for some more uh, <laughs> But can you imagine that poor woman? She, one minute she's walking down the street, minding her own business. The next minute, a presumably drunk chimpanzee is leaning out of a car going, Hey, senorita, why don't you come get in the car, eh? I'll give you a ride. Hey, mamacita. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I made Travis like, like Mexican. Um, I was as surprised to hear that accent come out of my mouth as maybe you were, but we'll put it down to an artistic choice and, and move on, I guess. Um, in 2003, uh, Travis escaped from the car again. Uh, this time, a passerby had thrown something through the window, which had given him a fright. It says, uh, Travis unbuckled his seatbelt, opened the car door and chased the man, but did not catch him. When police arrived, they lured the chimpanzee into the car several times, only to have Travis let himself out of another door and occasionally chase the officers around the car. That's crazy! That's not a joke, that actually happened. If he'd been a black teenager, they just would have shot him. But instead, they chased him around. Presumably, this was all to the Benny Hill soundtrack, and at one point, Travis was inexplicably dressed like a policeman and waving a little truncheon. But the craziest bit is when he undoes his seatbelt. I mean, can you imagine how scary that must have been for the guy who threw, threw the thing at the window? He, he thought he was being a badass, throws something at, at a chimpanzee, but then the chimpanzee's like, 
Hey, well, you're trying to get crazy with this one. <laughs> Don't you know I'm loco? <laughs> and gets out the car and fucking chases him, but not before undoing his seatbelt, which implies that at some point, his crazy owner, whilst cruising the neighborhood with 200 pounds of rage and muscles sitting next to her, thought, better strap him in first, you know, because safety first and all. <laughs> not to mention the fact that Travis had mental problems. He was, he was on Xanax, which is a drug for anxiety. But more importantly, it's a drug for humans with anxiety, <laughs> which really begs two very important questions in my mind. Firstly, which vet prescribed Travis the Xanax? Surely it's like first day of veterinary school, you learn the difference between a very angry chimpanzee and a slightly worried middle manager with an important meeting next week. <laughs> More importantly though, what the fuck does Travis have to be anxious about? He's drinking wine, he's harassing women in the street with apparent diplomatic immunity. At this point, he's no longer an exotic pet. He's the Silvio Berlusconi of the chimpanzee. Thank you very much.